All right, so it wasn't working out the way I was hoping it would. Uh, the engine mounts, as you see here, when I would have this mounted on the driver's side, the whole engine would be three inches too far forward. And if I mounted it this way on the passenger side, it was too far backwards. So either way, the engine was either uh, three inches into the firewall or three inches too far forward. And at the same time, these holes are about an inch or so, half an inch too far in. So I have a plan for this. This is an old engine mount that I got off eBay for my brick one oh, years ago. Um, really old. But the cool thing about them is that the holes are drilled in a way that it is able to slide back and forth. And there's even some more material here that if I wanted to, I could put a hole right here and then a hole right here. And then I can basically have the engine mounted. Hold on. So it can be mounted like this or like this. So it slides. It has about an inch of travel. So I took some measurements and it looks like it should fit pretty much dead on. And the nice thing is because this is a quarter inch plate, it'll push uh, the engine mounts out on each side a quarter inch or about a half inch total, which will help me get the engine mounts to mount more vertically into the subframe. So the plan is to uh, cut these tabs off and then grind the metal down smooth. So I just have basically just this flat piece here, which will be a spacer for the engine mount. And um, yeah, that's it. Right, I went to the store and got a bunch more cutoff discs and then a crap load of hardware for these mounts. Alright, driver's side mount. Please, please bolt up. I would be so happy if it worked. So very happy. So here we have the driver's side engine mount. So now they're all mounted up, hopefully in the right place. Next thing to figure out here is the angle of the motor mounts where they will attach to the subframe of the car. The motor mounts themselves are flat on the bottom, which would basically be, let's say, zero degrees. So if we look at my little handy device here on my phone, it's, you know, almost zero degrees with, actually my phone's not quite level, but it's pretty much zero degrees. Now, if, when I put this on the engine mount it's pretty close to like 15 i'm gonna say it's like 16 degrees there on that side and 14 on that side so these are at 15 degrees i'm pretty sure so the main issue is because this is angled at 15 degrees and the engine mount themselves will be flat it would end up looking something like this with a flat engine mount on the angled uh, subframe mount. So I can do one of two things. I can either build a little piece that will flatten this out, or I can grind this piece flat to be down to zero degrees. So 
Um, I need to figure this out. It looks like there's enough metal inside there that I could actually grind this down pretty far and it wouldn't really, you know, cause any problems with the metal itself on the subframe. So that might be the best bet, at least if that's the easiest bet. My other option would be taking something like this guy, cutting it in half at that uh, level, the 15 degree level, and then placing it on here like this, but, you know, cutting it down quite a bit so it ends up being flat and then using that as like a little spacer. But that would involve cutting and welding and measuring and stuff when I could just grind this piece down, so I might just do that. Hot. I've just confirmed something that I have long suspected, and that is that I am terrible at, uh, at fabricating parts. This is what just happened. So I'm an idiot, and I'm going to uh, try to fix this by using an actual straight blade now instead of a curved one. Money. Beautiful, look at that. Perfect. Looks good to me. Just taking the paint off the edges so when I weld it, it'll, the uh, paint won't be a problem. Well, I have uh, good news and bad news with these mounts. The good news is it looks like they're going to fit, which is pretty cool, actually. I'm pretty proud of this because I'm not a fabricator by any stretch. Bad news is, for some reason, when I was making this, I thought, oh, I can just put one bolt through the whole thing, drill a hole here, drill a hole here, bolt goes through, no problem. But because it's going to sit like this in the, in the uh, engine bay, sorry, actually, not true. It's going to be, it's going to sit like this in the engine bay. So one bolt goes straight up here, through the top part, which goes to the aluminum GTO mount, and then the bottom one has to go like this through the bottom of the subframe. So I'm going to have a bolt like this and a bolt like this, which means I might have to cut <laughs> one of these flat pieces off, drill a hole through both sides, weld bolts in, and weld it back on again. Yeah.
All right, now I have a very clean surface to weld to. It isn't the best looking weld in the world, but it'll hold. All it has to do is just keep the bolt from slipping through the hole, but that is, uh, it's totally fine. Well, shit, I have plenty of oil now. And that's why we put down cardboard. The engine mounts on the cradle under the engine sit at this angle, which is about 15 degrees, so the top has to be totally flat, just like this, and this will stick up for the uh, top mount going into the engines. I sure hope it works! And here's our result. Not too bad, I think. You know, I'm not, like I said, a good welder or fabricator, but you know, some of these welds are all right. I will eventually go through and grind all this down to make it look like, you know, a hack didn't weld this thing together, which uh, he did. So anyway, there we are. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. This is the most intricate thing I've ever fabricated before, and I feel pretty uh, happy and confident. So we'll see how it goes. So my thinking is these will sit in the engine bay just like this and the bottom ones go at their 15 degree angle and the top ones go straight up at 90 degrees and then the tops here sit flush to zero degrees and that's going to be how the engine will fit in the engine bay ideally. So um, I did leave the top bolts unwelded with the thinking that it'll give me a bit more um, angle to kind of fit the engine in there and finagle things but you know once you actually put the 
isolator on there and then the GTO mount and then the nut and tighten it down, it'll be you know, nice and firm. So um, there we have it. Oh, and one last thing, here's our mount and here's our one inch thick hockey puck that goes between the mount and the, the GTO mount itself, like this. Um, I'm going to replace these hockey pucks with one inch polyurethane spacers that I found online. I think it's like eight for $10 that I found online for polyurethane from Energy or Prothane or one of those places. So I am gonna go get real polyurethane instead of having you know a hockey puck which isn't designed for this kind of abuse. So I uh, just wanted to get that out there. All right, that wraps up this episode. Thanks again for watching. Uh, this has been part two of what was supposed to be a one part video. It's turned into a multi-part video just because I'm learning as I go and there are a lot of uh, moving pieces and parts and stuff here. So uh, thanks for bearing with me and uh, next episode should hopefully be putting the engine in uh, on the new mounts and hopefully it works out. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. It helps me a lot and uh, see you next time.